What's up guys, Four Wheeler Doctor back again. Tonight we're going to be working on this little 400EX. This is a little different color than the last one I had in here, but um, going to do a whole bunch of stuff to it. Uh, needs a set of clutches in it. I'm going to change them out. I got a little heavy duty kit off of uh, eBay. Um, going to put a jet kit in it. Got a stage 2 hot cam cam for it. Uh, cam chain. And then a... Um, gasket for the clutch side so that's what we're going to be doing in this little thing um, the uh, first thing I'm going to do is drain the oil out of it I'm going to have to take this side cover off over here to get to the uh, clutches and I'm hoping this isn't going to be too terribly bad to change this chain out not real sure don't really have any problems with the chain right now but the uh, cam kit I got and that was the only one I could find all of them well all of them came with a uh, chain so I figured I'd go ahead and replace it while I'm in there so uh, I'm gonna drain the oil out then I'll uh, probably start tearing some of this plastic off uh, to get get to the top end of the motor so I can get the um, get the cam out of there and also take the side cover off pretty much gonna do the cam chain and the clutches all at the same time uh, this is a uh, like I said a 400EX 2006 model and uh pretty much stop so um let me get started with taking some of this plastic off uh naturally pull the this seat and back fender comes off all at one piece then you'll take these uh these side pieces and this piece off to get the gas tank out and i believe that'll give us give us enough room to get to the top of the motor so let me tear those down i'll cut the camera back on when i get it tore apart all right guys got the plastic pulled all off of it uh still have to remove this white um, clear or whatever white plastic piece here uh, it's got a bolt here and probably going to go ahead and pull this snorkel out because that's uh, tied in with it too and that piece should come out of there um, let me get that off and I'll cut the camera back on alright got that off now that exposes the top side of the motor uh, we'll need to take this motor mount off here it's just a long bolt and I'm going to go ahead and pop these valve covers off and as well as this crankcase vent hose and the spark plug wire um, because we're not going to need those right now uh, we'll also need to remove this plug and this plug to get the thing at top dead center so uh, we'll go ahead and take the bracket the mount off the valve covers get these holes pulled out so i can show sitting at top dead center so we make sure we got it at top dead center when we uh when we pull the cam out all right guys i got the um, valve covers off this motor mount the crankcase vent spark plug wires off also pulled these two um plugs off over here uh allen head this was a six millimeter this is a 10 millimeter and what you want to do is take a 17 millimeter socket and put it on this crank bolt and rotate the motor around uh, in this case the motor turns um, counterclockwise and what you want to do is rotate it around until you see the intake valves open and close uh, there you go now they're moving the intake ones are the ones closest to the carburetor here so the valve going down opening and then now it's closing and so now you should be coming up on the compression stroke um, so let me see if I can hold this flashlight and hold the regular light here with one hand. You should be looking for some type of tick mark on the flywheel. I believe I just missed it. yes okay what you'll have the tick mark is actually on the there's a little uh, lip on the on the face of the flywheel right there and there'll be two tick marks and then the next tick mark you come to will be an F and then the, that's when it fires and then the next tick mark will be a T I'm not sure if you can see that or not but there's a T a little line with a T and what you want to do is line it up with this little notch up here in the top and so it's at top dead center. Another way to check this, once you've got it set up like that, is see if you've got um, clearance on both your valves, intake and exhaust. Uh, it's got a little bit, 
a little bit on the intake and there's some on the exhaust too these uh intake valves feel like they're kind of tight so um anyway that's top dead center so now what i'm going to do um is probably i guess i'll go ahead and pull the the attentioner off it's over here on this side because you want to get tension off of the cam chain that's the tensioner down in here those two eight millimeter bolts so you want to get tension off the cam chain before you pull this out and then um, probably go ahead and I think this exhaust will be all right go ahead and pull this side cover off because like I said we're going to do the clutches in it as well as the cam chain so uh, I'm going to pull the tension off pull that head off and then well the not the head the rocker arm holder and that um, side clutch cover and uh, then I'll cut the camera back on once I get so get those apart alright guys I got all these bolts out of the uh, side cover here um, one of the bolts is actually one of, uh, one of the bolts for the oil filter here so make sure you take that one out on the right side this one here is just a little short one but that one there's long it'll actually hold the cover on uh, next thing you want to do is take a screwdriver and stick in here and there's a pry point right there if you can get a hold of something to pry pry that away some I can't get a good grip on it there's another one on the back back there and I can't hardly get it either so uh, see if I can find something down here to pry on to get this thing to come back one pry point right there below the um, right there below the oil lines there it goes that started coming off then what you kind of the key to get this to come off of here halfway easily is to uh, try to pull it off kind of square so that the top and the bottom come off at the same time and uh, it's loose and I'm gonna have to wiggle it around off of there I'm also pretty sure this is not going to clear this um, brake lever so I'm going to take that allen bolt out of that brake lever and let it swing around just so I can get this to slide all the way off I don't think it'll come all the way by but let me It might do it yes it will come by so you don't have to take the brake lever off and uh, had a couple pieces fall out of there one thing is this little spring I'm not sure where in the world that goes but I'll figure it out before I put it back together and um, that's your oil pump you can see your cam chain there and then here's your clutches that we're supposed to be getting to. Looks like somebody's been in here before because these uh, clutch bolts are different. Um, see that one there is a... At least looks different. So somebody changed those clutches out at some point in time. So there you go. That's how you get the cover off. And uh, now I'm going to start taking the head off. I might go ahead and pull these clutches off just so uh, I can go ahead and I might have to move them anyway. I'm going to replace them for one thing and to get the uh, cam chain, get that gear off of there to get the cam chain off. I'm probably going to have to pull the uh, oil pump as well as that gear to get the cam chain off. To swap out with the uh, with the new cam. So uh, I'll go ahead and pull the clutches off and then I'll start taking the uh, rocker arm cover off. Alright, cut the camera back on in a little bit. Guys, that little spring that fell out as I pulled the cover off, I did figure out where that went. I've never taken one of these apart, as you can probably tell. But um, it actually goes on this clutch lever to help the clutch lever spring back. And the way you feed that thing in there is you take, see it's just got two little tabs on each side of it. You take it and slide it down over that shaft, and there's a hole in there. So it catches in that hole, then you can feed it through from the outside cover here 
all the way through there's a seal goes through the seal there's a little roller bearing there it goes through the bearing goes through the next hole and then it comes around and that other end of that tab goes in a little slot right there and as you pull this brake lever it has a little spring to it to uh, to help it return so that's where that came from um, just wanted to update you on that because there's a good chance you'd have the same problem when you fall out and it, it fall out when you pull yours apart and then you not know where in the world it goes so that's where it goes all right i'm getting the rest of this thing apart i'll cut the camera back on all right guys i got the um, five bolts out of the uh, clutch cover there with the springs and bolts just loosen those up as you go around and it uh, each one will spring out with a spring on it then you want to take this outer cover off sometimes it'll be stuck with oil but that case is not so well then you, you drop it and then you pick it up and this is what it looks like so then it, that exposes your uh, clutch disc and there's some plates in here too um, we're going to replace those on it in this case but uh, we're also I need to uh, take this basket off clutch basket and this gear off so I can get to that cam chain um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, loosen this or take this big nut off of the I guess that's the transmission shaft there and also pull this uh, this is the shifter uh, for lack of better terms plunger what makes it uh, shift in and out of gear and um, so then you exposes that nut there looks like it's about a 27 millimeter and it is so I'm going to take that that 27 millimeter nut off and while I got the 27 on the impact, I'm probably gonna go ahead and take that one off of the uh, the crank there, so I can get that gear off. And I'm also, I think I'm gonna have to take this um, the oil pump off. But once I get those those two nuts off, I'll be able to tell if it's gonna come loose or not. And to get this thing off, it won't, it doesn't require a puller or anything. It should slide right off the shaft. So uh, let me get it loosened up, and then I'll uh, I'll show it right before I pull it off. All right, that nut was staked on there. Uh, it, the impact just got it right off there. But if you're going to use just a regular wrench or ratchet, uh, you'll probably want to knock or lift that stake up just so it makes it a little easier to come off. And then there's a washer on here. And usually these things have, uh, yes, this one here has outside stamped on it. So that goes to the outside. Just want to make sure that you put that back in the same orientation that you got it. And uh, then you can just wiggle this clutch basket a little. Kind of pull it off of there square and it'll come off just like that there's also a sleeve in the back side there that'll slide out um, just make sure you don't lose that thing set this to the side here so that opens uh this part up so now i can get to this gear here on the crank as well as the um old pump i believe i can take these three 10 millimeter bolts out here of the that are actually holding the oil pump. I'm not real sure about that one there. The thing is, actually that gear will slip right off. So I'm still gonna have to take it, take it loose. But um, okay, so to you get the gear off, get that bottom bolt out, and then your oil pump will come off. Kinda like that. Looks like something kind of still holding it. I believe it's hung right on the back of that gear, so I'm gonna have to take that gear off uh, before I get the oil pump off. So let me see if I can back that down. washer on those two gears and then there's another gear on there that the actual cam rides, uh, cam chain rides on I don't think I can get that cam chain off of there without removing that oil pump but once you get that gear off it's not hard to slide the oil pump right out like that now you've got the chain exposed and 
what I want to do next before I take this uh, the rocker arm cover off up here is to take that um, uh, tensioner out. I know I mentioned that earlier and I just ne hadn't ever done it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that tensioner out. Then I'll start taking these bolts out of this uh, the rocker arm cover up here. All right, cut the camera back on. I want to get everything loosened up. Also, guys, one other thing you can do when you got it tore down like this, just to clean it out while you can get in here to it, remove this 10 millimeter bolt here. And this is what holds your uh, engine screen, oil screen on. Uh, I actually cleaned this one out, but it had some crud on it. Um, so just pull that out and spray it out with some brake cleaner to make sure you clean all your crud out and make sure you um, you get good oil pressure and all that once you get it put back together. Uh, it's something you can't really access very easily uh, during normal maintenance. So while you got it tore down, may as well go ahead and clean this thing out. All right, guys, I got all the bolts out. Uh, they're all 8 millimeters, with the exception of this one in the center, and it's a 12 millimeter head. Uh, this thing just has some RTV on it, I believe. Um, so you need to catch it somewhere and, and pry it up and get somewhere under it. Just like that. And it pops right off. Actually, it does have a metal gasket under it, but it's still uh, some RTV on it. Um, and there you go, that's your your rocker arms and that exposes your cam and you can kind of look at the cam and tell that it's at top dead center or close to top dead center because your uh, your lobes are, are facing pretty much down I need to check out here on the side and see if there's a tick mark uh, yes got a tick mark at the top of this cam gear here and that also uh, shows that it's at top dead center. It actually needs to be turned back just a hair so that, uh, so that I can get it dead on. So I don't know if I'm gonna have enough slack in this cam chain to slip it over to gear without taking the gear off. Sometimes you have to unbolt the gear from the, um, from the actual cam to get these chains off. So you just don't have enough slack in them. This chain's not worn completely out. It does have a little bit of wear in it, but it isn't too bad. Let's see if I can walk it off. Yeah. So I've got the uh, got the chain just walked off from the from the gear. Now I can pull this cam out of there. It's got bearings on each end of it so make sure you hang on to those so they don't you don't lose them. They just slip slip over the uh, over the ends of the of the cam. Most of the time you'd be worried about dropping this chain down in there but in this case we're going to replace the chain so it really doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just have to worry about fishing the new one up in here and then when you get this thing apart you can actually see there's two tick marks on each side that lines up with each side of the head and then there's also a tick mark on the top that shows you at top dead center it's also got out stamped on the um, on the outside of that um, gear to sh I guess signify that that goes to the outside of the motor so what I'll need to do now is uh, get the new cam and I'm going to I might see if I can uh, go ahead and bolt, bolt it up, loosely bolt it up in there and, um, and get the chain on it without having to uh, put, it on, put, put it on the gear and then bolt it up while I got it in the bike because it makes it a whole lot easier if you can do it ahead of time. So let me get, the, uh, get an Allen, get these um, bolts out and need to transfer that gear over to the, over to the uh, new cam. Alright, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. Alright guys, like I said, um, this is a stage 2 hot cam. Just wanted to show you the difference in the, uh, in the profiles of them. Uh, I don't know if you can tell it that good on the, on the camera, but the lobes are definitely bigger on the one on your right than it is on the left, the stock one. Uh, and it's got a little bit different shape to it, which helps, um, you know, helps the, in the performance. Uh, the other difference in this thing is this is the factory cam and it has a decompression pin, uh, lever collar I guess you'd call this and it um, it lowers the compression so that 
the engine's a little easier to turn over. Most of these aftermarket cams do not have that. Uh, they still seem to turn over pretty good, but uh, it just it just has more compression when you start it. Um, so that's the difference. You really, it's it's you can tell actually tell a visible difference in the in the amount, and that's just that much more that the valve is going to open once you do get it running. So um, let me put the cam gear back on here, and um, like I said, the way it goes is the the had those tick marks on it. These lobes go down when it's at top dead center. So uh, it had the one tick mark here and the two tick marks here. So that's how you have to orientate the um, uh, the gear once you bolt it on here. And also want to put some Loctite on the on those bolts just to make sure they don't back out. So let me see if I can get that on there, and then we'll, uh, we'll see if I can fish the um, fish the chain over the over the uh, gear when it's on the bike. All right, I got the uh, gear put back on the uh, cam there, and um, now I'm gonna fish this new cam chain uh, through the cylinder or through the motor here to get it down onto the um, get it down onto the crankshaft. All right, so I just pull this old chain off. It just slips right off, and you can pull it on down from the top. Get the old chain there. And then just fit, slide this new one down in here, kind of swing it out over the bottom, and get it back on your cam chain. Sprocket down here on the uh, crankshaft, just like that. There's really nothing to time up at this point. Um, you do want to keep that tight so that it doesn't drop down and and, and jump off of uh, of the gear down here. I am going to go over on the other side and make sure that the uh, tick mark is still showing over on the um, uh, chain over here on the uh, flywheel not chain on the flywheel to make sure absolutely sure it's at top dead center still on the uh, at least the bottom ends at top dead center alright let me cut the camera off I gotta find my flashlight so I can see the uh, see the tick mark Guys, one other thing I forgot to mention about once you get this the um, stock cam out is there is a pin that needs to be removed uh, below this cam. It's actually for the decompression lever. I forgot to do it in this case and I'm doing it after the fact, but it's a lot easier to do if you do it once the cam pulled out. It goes in that hole right there that you can see. It looks like a, a bolt would go in it. And what it is is this little lever here and a spring you can see those so you need to get both the lever out and the spring the springs kind of deep in there so what I ended up doing was just taking a piece of uh, a piece of wire kind of stiff wire kind of bent the end of it a little bit stuck it down into the um, into the spring and slipped it out of there it doesn't hurt to have a magnet on hand either to get a hold of it because that stuff's kind of small and you definitely don't want it to fall down to the motor but uh, since this new cam doesn't have a decompression uh, cam on it that you don't need that pin anymore so alright just make sure you take that off alright I got it dead on the T mark over there in the uh, in the inspection hole and now I'm going to see if I can fish this cam chain over the actual gear here and there again you want to line up those um, those tick marks on that on that gear the one tick mark that points at the 12 o'clock position and then you have a tick mark at the at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock they're supposed to line up with the with the top of the cylinder head and the 12 o'clock naturally points straight up and down so if you get all those lined up I think you can actually fish this chain around here uh, with these bearings off of it and then once you get get it in there lined up that looks pretty close right there then you get it in there lined up you can slide these bearings back on the end of the cam I think let's see if I can
Yeah, I can't get this one to slide over that. I think I'm going to end up having to uh, put that, put the gear on there. Let me try one more thing here. Oh yeah, it's gonna go. The um, I slipped that bearing on that. On, well, actually, there's bearings on both ends of it now, but it's uh, the the chain will actually you can walk it walk it over on there now to uh, to get it on. Let me wipe my gloves off and I'll hold the camera down there and let you show you where the tick marks are. All right, guys. Let me uh, get the flashlight so you can see what we got going on here. All right, so the cam is in there, and you can see the tick mark right there. And then there's another tick mark. Move this cable out of the way. It's kind of hard to make out, but it's right above that bolt. And then the other tick mark is just behind that dowel. And then my flashlight's gonna start flashing just behind that dowel. You can halfway see it right there. Uh, so that's that's what you're looking for. You need a you need a tick mark here, a tick mark here, and then the one at the 12 o'clock position. And also just as a another uh, thing to look for is make sure your lobes of your cam are facing down, and that's uh, a sure sign that you've got it. You've got it at least at uh, close to top dead center. And I check the um, also check the tick mark over there on the side, and it's still on the T. So what I'm going to do now is pull this uh, metal gasket off, clean it up a little bit with some Scotch Brite, and um, put some RTV back on that cover, and stick the cover back on, and start putting it back together. I'm also I put that cover the rocker arms back on, and then I'm gonna uh, probably cut to uh, replacing those clutches just because I got to do that too may as well have uh, have it in this same video as well so I'll go ahead and put the cover on and I'll get to putting the clutches on I'll uh, cut the camera back on when I get started back on the clutches all right guys now I've uh, got the um, valve cover rocker arm thing back on the uh, four-wheeler and I'm gonna put these clutches back together this is pretty self-explanatory but I'll still show it since I'm at least doing it so uh, the kit I got came with new springs uh, both the plates as well as the friction material uh, you pretty much just take these apart and put them back together just as they come apart um, to start off with you have a uh, friction material plate these clutches really don't look too terribly bad but the, uh, the owner wants to replace them so that's what we're going to do so you have a, a friction plate, a um, metal disc, another friction plate, and it just, I think you can kind of see the pattern. Uh, another metal disc, another friction plate. This has got the metal, uh, next metal disc pressed on the back of or stuck to the back of it. And you just keep taking them, keep taking it down until you get to all of your metal disc that one there's got a little bit of wear on it and this last one here is actually um, stays on here but you want to clean this up it's uh, pretty nasty the oil in this bike looks real bad I don't know the last time it was changed but after the wheel change after doing all this work to it but it looks pretty bad and this clutch uh, basket actually has a little bit of wear on it too you can tell where the where the plates um, slide up and down on this uh, clutch basket they wear little grooves in it some of them get real, real extreme these here aren't too too bad but it does have a little wear alright so uh, the first first thing that needs to go back on is a friction piece of friction material and it slides in these slots here so drop that in like that and then just keep working your way out 
pretty much until you run out of stuff. Uh, this inner plate locks on, or these uh, metal plates lock on this inner washer. And then another friction material. Like that. Like that. Uh, pretty much how you do it. keep trying to reach over there and grab one of the old ones and stick it in there but I don't want to do that. Like that. That. And I don't know if you can remember or not but when we took it apart the last piece that went on there was a piece of friction material and uh, it actually locks into that top ring. It's got a little different um, I really don't know the purpose in that but it goes into this uh, this slot here by itself as opposed to these other ones are in in these other slots that's how it it bolts up and then got another set of um, springs for it you'll have to bolt this thing back up to the motor uh, before you can put these on and what you do with, when you put these on is you just want to um, to tighten these up you know alternate around tighten them down until it uh, until it pulls all the way down on it and then you torque them down to I believe these are about 10 newton meters or something like that um, eight, eight or so foot pounds. So that's it. That's how you do the clutches on one. Um, I'm going to stick it back on the bike and I'll start the camera up here in a second. Alright guys, I got a lot of this stuff cleaned up now. Go ahead and start putting some of it back together inside the motor here. Um, uh, clean the gasket material off here as well as clean the cover that goes back on it. But I'm um, going to go ahead and start putting the uh, or put the the oil pump back on. I just left the bolts in, in it when I took it apart but the only thing you want to make sure of is this gasket on the back here. You make sure your bolt holes uh, line up with that with the gasket that goes on there and there's also a little dowel on this top bolt here. Make sure that's still on there as well. Uh, slide this on there like that. There's three bolts on it, 10 millimeters. put those in wherever the impact is all right got that on next thing needs to go on is your um, sprockets gears I guess you'd call that go on your uh, on your crank the bigger one goes on there first just slides on there on those um, on those splines it actually has a keyway in it somewhere or another so uh, you got to rotate it around till you find that keyway up and right on there there it is right there all right just had to hold your mouth right uh, same way with this you can see where it's got a got a notch there uh, this does have a little stepped area on the back of it there that goes toward the motor uh, so the keyway lines up the same had a washer and a nut I'll tighten that up in a minute and then the next piece that needs to go on Will be the clutch. Make sure this piece here slides into the back of your clutch. The uh, it's a little sp spacer and a roller bearing, and then there's also a washer that needs to go on this front side here. It just slides on this transmission shaft. You won't have to hold your clutch plates in there to keep them from falling out while we do this. There it goes. Sometimes you got to kind of wiggle it around to get everything lined up because you're having to you're lining up the teeth on your um, on your crank over here 
along with the uh, splines in your transmission output so you may have to wiggle it around some to get it to, to get all everything to line up like it should Stick the washer back on it. And then it also has a has a nut on there. on there and I'll tighten, tighten those up in just a sec all right I'll cut the camera back on God, I don't, you probably didn't see half of that because it's like the camera done shifted around but I'll cut the camera back on in a second all right guys so I got um, both of these bolts our nuts tightened up this one here actually has that washer behind it that had the out written on it and then there's also a washer right behind this nut here just a normal washer uh, I think it was stuck to the nut when I took it off um, so you tighten this down and uh, you also want to stake this nut back in there so it doesn't back off so uh, I'm gonna do that right now and um, then I'll cut the camera back on right before I tighten up the clutch cover all right guys got the uh, the nut staked in there uh, next thing you want to do is put your thing you want to do is put your uh, clutch uh, plunger I guess you could call it back inside of the clutch there and this clutch cover slide it back on there that off a little bit and then you can put your springs back in these are the new springs that came with my um, clutch kit Stick all those on, and then the bolts are the same bolts that came off of the factory. And just uh, hand tighten those, or hand start them. They actually have a little bit of little bit of tension on them, just by hand starting them. This will keep you from uh, stripping them out, maybe getting it across the way. That's the one that uh, I told you about was a different one. It's actually not quite long enough to, to compress the spring down. There with me a second. I'll oh, get it tightened up a little bit. It's not gonna tighten it up. All right. Let me. Uh, what you want to do with these is just kind of ease them in. work your way around with them. I'm not real sure where the other n bolt went to. I know I had all the bolts when I took it apart. I don't see it sitting over here with all the other tools, so all the other parts. So let me find that other bolt and uh, I'll cut the camera back on in a second when I locate it. Alright, I found the other bolt. Got them all tightened up. Next thing to do is uh, stick this gear back on the oil pump here it meshes up with the there that gear on the um, on the crank and also one other thing this didn't fall off when I took mine off but make sure you put this washer back on here for the that's the reverse lever make sure that washer goes back in there mine stayed stuck on the shaft 
a lot of times they'll get stuck on that front cover when you pull it off just make sure you get it back on there um, next order of business is the tensioner um, I took the bolt out of the back of the tensioner and I know this is going to be kind of look kind of ghetto but I made this little tool here this is actually just out of a piece of aluminum because it cuts easy um, what you can do is put a screwdriver in here and back this tension off of this uh, tensioner until it um, until you can actually install it in the bike but what that doesn't let you do is lock it so I made this little thing here which is very similar to the one that that Honda recommends you using and uh, you can back back this off like this and then there's little notches in the very top of it once you get it backed all the way off you can stick this thing in those notches and it holds itself there makes it a whole lot easier putting one of these tensioners in uh, alright so I'm gonna put a little bit of RTV around this and go ahead and bolt this up too alright folks so I got a um, got the gasket on here and a light coat of RTV around it um, I still need to put the this clutch lever in here I think we I kind of went over that earlier about how you put it together earlier in the video uh, so you put this little spring on here like this it goes in a little hole in the shaft and then feed this thing through very carefully feed it through that roller bearing all the way to the inside all the back side there and have it to where it'll catch on what you do is you'll install it with the arm like this and then rotate that thing around so it will lock around this little arm here um, so that's that's how I'm gonna put it on I'm gonna see if I can get this camera to stay right here while I do this my luck with this hasn't been too good but I'll uh, try okay so now I've got like I said I got the RTV on there and you, your um, washer is on that reverse gear that's really the main thing you need to check for so you slide this cover on make sure you clear your oil lines over there you just slid in here alright just going in all the way down I don't think the I don't think the clutch line is lined up like it should be let me slip this thing off here and see see what we got going on that clutch lever is not lined up like it should be Definitely not an ideal situation here because you don't want to uh, don't want to break your gasket, especially the brand new one I just stuck on there. this gasket's a little bit flexible because it didn't break 
we'll go ahead and stick it on there. All right, I think this uh, plunger wasn't pulled all the way out as much as it should have been, so it wasn't lining up. So let me stick it back on there and see if I can get it to line up now. Clutch your arm like it should be. There it goes. Had to wiggle it up and down a little bit before it would catch on there. Now you can actually see as you push on this clutch lever, it pulls in on the cover. That's what it needed. It just needed to be shook around a little bit up and down. To, um, to get that fork caught on the end of that clutch plunger. All right, now I'm gonna stick these uh, bolts in this thing and uh, I'm probably gonna call it a night with this little job and uh, come back tomorrow and hopefully crank this thing up. So, all right, y'all have a good night. I'll uh, be back tomorrow and see if we can get this baby to fire up. All right, guys. Uh, as my little boy likes to say, it's the next day, and um, we're finishing up with this thing, 400EX. I'm going to stick these old tubes on there. You want to make sure those O-rings are still on. Slide those in the hole, and then there's a, a bolt on each one to hold them in. You just kind of slide in there, just like that two bolts to hold those in and then we're going to adjust the valves on this thing up here in the top and uh, I will cut the camera back on in a sec when I get everything get these two bolts tightened up and get everything uh, ready to go up there I get my um, feeler gauges and wrenches and screwdrivers and all that stuff so cut the camera back on in a sec all right, guys, uh, over here on the left side of the bike, we'll check, make sure this thing's at top dead center. Just look in this one inspection hole here, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that or not, but the, there is a little dash mark and a T in there, and that is the top dead center. You rotate it around until you, um, you get clearance. Actually, your intake valve goes down and then comes back up and the next time you see that T in there you're at top dead center but uh, you also want some clearance in your both your intake valve and your exhaust valve if you're on the this on this is top dead center on the compression stroke if it's on the exhaust stroke it'll one of these will the exhaust will be tight uh, in this case you got play in both so you're ready to adjust the valves the uh, card that comes with this cam kit tells you that the lash uh, or the valve clearance should be 0.13 millimeters for the intake and 0.15 millimeters for the exhaust and that's what I'm going to adjust them at uh, just with a feeler gauge um, what you do is you break the that little adjuster nut loose it's a 10 millimeter and then stick your feeler gauge right below it these are the intake valves and the ones on the front there are the exhaust and uh, you stick your filler gauge under there until you get just a little resistance on it. Then you tighten down that lock nut to um, to lock it in. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and adjust the valves in it. And um, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. I still need to put a jet kit in this carburetor. So I'm going to get everything tied up here. The uh, 
I can do it now the spark plug um, wire needs to be hooked back up as well as this uh, crankcase vent that goes on here uh, I'll probably leave that off for a second until I get these valves done and uh, so I'll go ahead and do that and we'll also put these inspection holes back in over here and we'll be done with the cam install and then like I said I'm probably going to go ahead and do a video while I'm here of the um, uh, jet kit install I don't think there's much to it on this bike so uh, I'll probably run through that too so I'll cut the camera back on and get, get started on the carburetor that's one other thing I almost forgot I gotta put this motor mount back in here um, to finish up your top end and then put your little plastic cover back on and your gas tank and your top end should be done uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this carburetor off and do the jet kit on it but I just wanted to uh, remind everyone about the your motor mount bolt Hey right, guys now I'm gonna take this carburetor off what you the easiest thing to do with it is just to loosen both your clamps up here and uh, you can bend this the rear clamp or bit rear boot back uh, at your intake and just wiggle the carburetor around and it'll come off naturally we've already well we never put the gas tank back on but if you were if you're just watching this just to see this part uh, you need to take your gas tank off and your um, white plastic piece that goes over top of the motor and all that then what I like to do is just turn the carburetor upside down and let it uh, drain the remaining gas that's in the bowl out it'll come out in the vent tubes this is actually a new carburetor the owner has not been long replaced it but um, with doing this new cam in here and uh, got an exhaust on it I don't think it was on there originally uh, he just wanted to put a jet kit in it so we could jet it out alright the next item to take off is this bottom bowl there's four bolts four uh, screws I'm sorry around it that you need to take loose and that will expose your main jet pilot jet uh, so we'll go ahead and pull that off real quick want to be careful not to uh, strip these things out they're notorious for, for getting stripped out uh, thank goodness I've got a uh, quite a stash of carburetors over there under my under my um, shelf that I can rob screws off if I ever strip them out but a lot of people don't have that luxury so now you just slide this bowl off you can see that carburetor is real clean. So uh, now let's open up the jet kit and see what we need to do. I'll cut the, cut the camera back on in a sec. Alright, so uh, we're on the bottom end here. I'm going to take the main jet out. It, the instructions call for um, putting a we got a stock exhaust so we don't have that we got an aftermarket exhaust used the 146 because we're below 3,000 feet in, uh, in elevation and so you back this back this jet out here just use a uh, I just got an adjustable because ain't no telling what size that thing is and find the it calls for using an adapter main jet main jet adapter I don't know if I'm gonna even need that or not I think the adapter was just so it would uh, screw into certain carburetors this, this uh, jet here looks somewhat normal I guess the only reason it might be because of the uh, extended length on it because that's a longer jet than, than what comes in the kit and that adapter would make it sit down lower into the fuel this is the adapter so we are going to install that and um, as the instructions say so you screw the adapter in and then the 146 well, I said 146, but I grabbed out the 150. 
Alright, the 146 jet is what it says to go with at um, 3,000 feet or below and an aftermarket exhaust. So, get that out of the bag and screw this down into the adapter. Just as reference, you can check this right next, this uh, original jet right next to that with the adapter in it, and it's very, very close to being the same height. So, I think my um, assumption is correct that this makes your jet sit in the right place or sit where it should, as it would if it was uh, if it was the factory jet. And just kind of snug that down with the screwdriver. All right, now the next thing we need to do is. Um, Locate the fuel mixture screw, which on this carburetor it's right in here. And this is one of them that's got this funky little, uh, it's like a, looks like a D almost. Well, the kit comes with this tool here to, to adjust that with. Uh, so it says adjust the screw. This is for a 2006 model, so you have to use the tool. For the older models, it looks like it just has the flat blade screwdriver adjuster turn it um, in clockwise until it seats and then back it out three and a half turns and that's for below 5,000 feet which is what we're at so we'll run it in all the way until it lightly seats and then back it back out three and a half turns what I like to do on these um, with these little tools is put just a mark on it to help me keep up with the three turns or tell when it's turning because you can't you can't really see the dented end spot on it when you get it in there and it's hard to tell so I'll get a uh, sharpie and draw a line on it so there you go sharpie with a line on it spin that thing in there get it to where it's on the D or on the flat side and tighten it in thing is tight all right I think that's it and then back it back out three turns I'm sorry, back it back out three and a half turns. That's one, two, three, and a half. All right, and so the bottom end should be done. Now I need to flip it over and uh, replace the needle in the top end. I'll uh, cut the camera back on once I get it flipped over and everything back where parts don't fall out of it. All right, now guys, on the top. We need to take these three screws out. Get your top plate off and then uh, remove the slide lift arm screw that is slide lift arm screw and two needle plate screws so the lift arm screw is this one here Pull your slide up. Might be tough to get to those screws down in the bottom there. I'm going to have to get a regular 
smaller screwdriver. I think these will, this will get in there. Yeah. Yeah, you can just use a regular screwdriver on those. So you, those are a lot smaller screws. Make sure you don't lose them, drop them like I just did. I'm not real sure of the purpose in uh, loosening that screw up. I guess that's just so you don't have to work the throttle to get it to come up. Alright, there's both of those screws. You flip this arm back at that point and now slide the slide out. Just like that. There's your slide. And what you're trying to get to here is this needle on the inside. This is a uh, not what most people talk about needles in carburetors. This is um, a needle that meters the fuel coming out. It doesn't, this is not the needle and seat that most people talk about them leaking. So it says uh, take your new needle. Dino Jets kits come with a needle that's shaped a little different. So you t slide this old needle out and you grab this new needle. And this new needle has these little notches on the air, on the end of it, and in this case, it says um, for 5,000 feet or below, put the clip, which is this little uh, e-clip they call those, comes in the kit. Put that on your number three. number three notch. The kit also comes with a little teeny washer. It says to install that washer on top of the e-clip once you get it on the on the needle. So I've got to get the dang clip out of here. There it is. Alright. And then the number three notch The number would number one being at the top. Your number three would be three down from the top. You just press this E clip in there. Pretty dang tough to get it snap. There it goes. All right, and you can see there one, two. It's on the third notch from the top. And we're also going to take and stick this washer came with the kit back on there. little washer here and feed that back into your slide and just hope your washer don't flop off like mine just did because I dropped the slide down in or the uh, needle down in there too fast so there you go slid down in there just like that and then you just need to reinstall the slide. I did notice that when I took the thing apart, this notch goes toward the, uh, in this case, the front of the carburetor. So make sure you put that back in the same orientation. Pick this arm up so you can get back in there to it. And I can go ahead and tell you this is going to be tough to get those screws back in. You want to ease this thing down in there because if you if your needle happens not to be lined up quite right, it'll push that needle back out and knock your washer off and all sorts of stuff. So you don't want to do that. Um, your best bet here is to have a magnetic screwdriver, which I do in this case, to hold those screws and put them in. Tighten those down. The other small one. to 
back that one out just a little bit because it uh twisted the holes around so okay got that and now I need to put the one um, bolt back into this the pivot arm here I'm not sure how that's gonna all line up but we'll hope for the best and it looks like we're not hoping too good it needs to be slid over just a little the shaft is slid in there moving everything around need to slide over just a hair and grab a little pick grab a little pick and slide that shaft over just a little bit so that our bolt hole lines back up like that get your screw going back in there again a magnetic screwdriver is a lifesaver tighten that down smooth operation uh, put your washer I mean washer gasket back on here rubber not a gasket it's an o-ring and your plate kind of wiggle that plate around a little bit make sure that gaskets or the o-rings in there seated in good notice I only got two screws because I dropped one of them over there on the side so I'm going to have to run and get it and put it in All right, guys, everybody wants to see a startup video on these things when I get them done. So um, I uh, filled this thing up with oil, got the carburetor put back together, gas tank on, just did a little video working on one of the fenders of it, and I still got to put all that back on there. Had to do a couple other things with it, um, but I got it full of oil, and I've actually been turning it over a little bit because it takes a little bit once it's drained all the way out of the motor to get it out of that uh, oil container back into the motor so i've turned it over a little a few times and um with the uh, gas turned off and all that so it wouldn't crank and so i think i've got enough oil in it and i'm gonna see if the thing will crank up hopefully we've got our keep our fingers crossed it should should bust right off we got the gas turned on on it now so let's see sounds pretty good uh got just a little tick to it it probably doesn't have all the oil circulated to the top of the motor yet as a um it's getting a little dark here so i'm not going to ride it or ride it around but i'll come back over tomorrow and take it for a ride it should quiet that down once the oil gets to the top end of it and uh, so now that i've got it running i'm gonna take it and check make sure the oil's full in it and um that should be pretty much it for this one so i hope you guys like my video like subscribe did a lot of stuff on this bike. This is probably could have been two or three different videos, but I'm going to try to put them all into one. So uh, uh, I may have some more work on these 400s. This, this boy here has got two of them, so he usually keeps me busy with stuff. And uh, y'all just be on the lookout for some more. All right. Have a good night.